Hey everyone, welcome back to Shiny Bright Doggo. Welcome back to our channel. Except I'm not with Janine this time. So here's the deal. I saw this estate sale and I got really excited for it. As you guys can see, the listing looks pretty good. Looks like there's vintage Christmas, maybe some vintage Halloween hidden. Um, so I took off in the morning to go. Janine wasn't too sure whether or not she was gonna go. I woke up at like six in the morning to go when the sale starts at nine. And I just wasn't feeling it. I didn't sleep very well. Um, I wasn't feeling like waiting in line and getting a number and it just makes me very anxious sometimes so I have to feel it out in the moment. So I woke up, I was like, I'm gonna go back to sleep because um, I didn't get that much sleep to begin with. Um, and then I woke up at around eight o'clock and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go. So it is about 11.30 right now. Janine is staying behind, but we're gonna head into this sale. It's the first day. It looks good, right? So I'm not too sure what's gonna be in there. People are fast though. People know vintage holiday, so there might not be much left, but we're gonna still go try our hand at this estate sale and see what we can find. Let's go. All right guys, so we're heading into the basement first, which is the first part of the house I always hit up because I usually find holiday there. I found these ceramic, almost hobbyist pieces, which sort of intrigued me. And I saw that there were two. Um, they're made out of styrofoam and this foil backing, but they were broken and not in the best condition. So I wasn't too sure about them. This was definitely a digger sale. There was stuff everywhere. And those are the types of sales that we like to go to where you sort of just, the estate sale company leaves the house pretty much as is and it's up to the people to come in and look through the house and its full contents. This woman definitely loved her flowers and floral arrangements. I came across this box of real dried out flowers. Um, they were definitely corsages, so I was looking out for Christmas corsages. Even though this wasn't holiday stuff, um, I did have an idea that maybe there could have been Christmas corsages if there were other different corsages here. So I was sort of right. I pulled out this box of Christmas bows, uh, took a look, but there was nothing that really piqued my interest. I came across a nativity. It was in okay condition. And then in another part of the basement, I came across this box of really old crepe paper streamers, which really was intriguing to me. I've seen Halloween crepe paper streamers, so I was sort of hoping to come across that, but it didn't seem to be Halloween. Um, I did find this little dream pet. He was cute, but in not the best condition, so I put him back. But I went back to this box just to make sure there wasn't anything like luau hidden or... It, it just seemed to be general like birthday stuff so i left it behind i came across these rolls of wrapping paper which was exciting i'm always on the lookout for vintage wrapping paper because it can resell pretty well surprisingly you can lot it up by the yard um, and sell a whole roll that way i made my way over to this bin that had some uh christmas tree skirts but i could just tell from the fringe that was on it and the material that it was newer, probably from the 80s. So I didn't have to look too much into it and I left it behind. As you guys can tell though, this woman loved her floral arrangements. This entire basement looked like a flower shop. It was really incredible. I didn't know where to start, but I went over to this table that had some Avons. I looked over them quickly, but I did see this Easter little box, well, box filled with Easter. Um, and I took a look, but most of it seemed a bit newer or hobbyist pieces. Nothing really from the mid-century. This probably was made in Taiwan, so I left them behind. I did lift up this really pretty, actually, painting uh, because I saw these picks. These also probably went into floral arrangements, so I was hoping for some Christmas or Halloweens, but it looks like they were all Mother's Day ones, which is pretty interesting. I did come across a few Easter, though, and now it's exciting. I pulled those off to the side because I was interested in them. Happy Secretary's Week. Don't see that anymore. And this really cute happy birthday one. The rest were just ones that probably wouldn't resell well for me. Not something I would use in my own collection. Um, so I did decide to put them back where I found them. But then I also came across this set of new old stock. Um, I guess this is like sparkly pipe cleaner. And it seemed to all be in the box. So I took that too. What was really cool just to see was this like built-in TV entertainment center. And this was also in the basement, which I found interesting. They must have, you know, had the basement as an entertainment area. Now, I came across these onion bags. These are produce bags. I believe they're also from the mid-century. You guys let me know, but 
There's a bunch of them. They're all onion bags, but I just love the graphics. I decided to pick up three of them just for the graphics, um, and I'll probably resell these. Came across some more wrapping paper, and these were the flat kind, which in my experience have been the ones to uh, be older when I find them, um, usually from the mid-century, but these looked a little newer still, probably from the 70s and 80s. I took a thorough look, though, because you could never tell, really. You really had to take a really good look when you're looking at things like wrapping paper. I came across this little bucket of ribbon, which excited me because I immediately saw these Christmas ones. Well, they're sort of Christmassy. They're red and green and they have great graphics. And that's what I'm after here are ribbons with good graphics that are either Christmas or different holidays that are from mid-century. Um, I was only finding those two, but then I did come across this one from the 70s. I really did like the graphics on this one, but the barcode was just too big. It took up too much space. So I did decide to leave that one behind still in the basement and I came across these amazing cookbooks. These were different cookbooks based off of different categories like holiday cooking. So I had to take a look inside and see the graphics, decide they were amazing and took this one. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had taken them all, but at this point I didn't know how the company was going to price their items. It's different based off of every company, every estate sale. Um, so I wasn't too sure. So I only took the ones I really wanted. I came across another corner of Christmas. There was so much holiday. And these are kitschy plastic, uh, I guess centerpiece wreaths. You could put a candle in the middle. There's also a lot of garland and tinsel in this area. So I made sure to take a good look at everything. A lot of it seemed newer, but you know, you always have to check. And we have a video if you guys are interested in how to identify vintage Christmas from newer Christmas. And I was using a lot of those, um, I guess, skills and tips and tricks when I was looking at all this Christmas to really pick out the things that were from the mid-century. So 1950s to the 60s, 70s. This tinsel looked older. It was like thicker. So I assumed that to be older. And I did see this popcorn. It looks great on camera, but in person it was really, really faded. So I left that one behind. I could only imagine what was here at the sale when it first started. I'm sure there was like some really great vintage Christmas. Um, there is definitely more than was pictured in the pictures on the listing online. So, you know, you always take a gamble with these estate sales. You never know which ones are going to be, you know, treasure troves or duds. But this one seemed to be really great. I picked up these pieces, which were probably hobbyist pieces. Looks like somebody crafted them. They're really cute, uh, but not quite my style. So I left them behind. And then I finally noticed this amazing box. I didn't see it at first, but I'm glad I did spot it. Um, it's all about the graphics. It's all about the packaging. It is just so cool. And I decided I could use some of that older tinsel from another package to fill up that box. Love this Clementine box. I almost took it until I took a look inside and decided it was too dirty. And then guys, this was in a bedroom. It's a rushed in. I couldn't believe it. It was just sitting there. I don't know why nobody took it. It's in okay condition, but I just had to grab it. This was the dresser in the bedroom. Just taking a look but there wasn't much that interested me. I turned around and looked on the bed and there was another box of papers and whatnot. I came across another good housekeeping cookbook and it was all cookies and had some really cute illustrations. So that went into the bag as well, as you guys could imagine, just couldn't leave it behind. Um, everything else was newer though, like much newer, probably in the last decade or so. In the living room on the couch was a lone box of Christmas. These deers were really cute. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but they were not in good condition. They had broken parts. Their feet had been glued onto something at one point, so I left them behind. There was an upstairs portion of the house, which you had to go through another door to get through. Um, so I went upstairs into the attic, and I wish I had gotten a better shot for you guys to see sort of the, the whole space. It was really big, and there was so much. Um, it was really hot up there, but I did come across some vintage Christmas. Um, other than that, there wasn't too much. It was really hard to dig through. I did come across this old typewriter, which was cool. And this box of, they were really, I guess, like Holy Communion books. Um, but there were some letters mixed in. So I was pretty interested in seeing what was in the box. And I noticed that one of the letters had vintage Christmas seals on here. So I was like, there must be some vintage cards up here in the attic. I kept digging and eventually I came across a pile of 
old letters from like the 40s and some of them were Christmas cards some of them were not um, I had a big pile that I sorted through at the sale and I could only imagine how much there was earlier in the morning but I took a look through every single one that I had found made two piles to keep and bring that's what I decided to bring home and that was what I left behind. So there was a good amount to go through. Before leaving, I took one last look in the basement. There was just so much stuff to go through. I probably could have stayed longer, but I did take a really good look through all the holiday and took what I felt was the best stuff that was left. Um, there was this little cupcake box. I love it, <laughs> but I left that behind. But yeah, overall, I think I did pretty good. We're gonna head back to the car. Right, guys we are out of that sale that was an interesting sale now I know if I had gone early early I probably would have found some amazing things that house was old generations of stuff you could tell it was quite amazing it was pretty dirty um, so I was a little afraid of the price he was gonna give me because I'd have to clean everything up um, or I'll have to clean everything up um, there was an attic a basement it was a two-family home actually but I got a great price. He gave me $15 for everything. So I thought that was pretty fair. Am I a little upset for not waking up earlier? A little bit, but that's the thing with estate sales. You know, they're so cutthroat around this area. Um, I really just wanted to go in um, and just take my time and see everything. So I'm glad in hindsight that I did that, but I also would have woken up earlier to see what else was in the house. So either way, I think we did pretty well. We're gonna head back home. Actually drop off some packages. Janine's troll mug sold. Um, thank you, I know that went out to a viewer. But yeah, we're gonna head home and see what we got. Let's go. All right, Janine, you didn't come with me to the sale. Nope. Um, I got all of this in the bag for $15 and you haven't seen anything yet. I haven't seen anything. I did throw this up on Instagram, so you might've seen this one. Well, maybe just that, yeah. <laughs> a little rushed in. Wow. I couldn't believe when he was still on the bed. Now these are stuffed animals and toys from the 50s and 60s. This one has its issues, right? It will really need a good cleaning. But we can do that. It's definitely um, manageable, right? Yeah, and what I think is important is the face and the bow. Absolutely. And even the tag are in pretty wow. decent con condition. Um, you can see that Rushton tag right there. Wow. I did notice there's a little bit of like um, tearing at the face, but I'd say overall, He's in decent condition. These yeah. can sell for over a hundred dollars when they're in good oh condition. My God. So I don't. I also like sort of like him. So oh, I don't wait, know. Um, we didn't say how much did you pay for everything. I did say. Did you? Yeah, fifteen for the whole bag. Oh. He'll definitely need some work. If you guys have any tips and tricks, make sure to drop them in the comments. But he's one of the better finds I think of the day. He's really cute. Yeah, I just wonder uh, times like this, like what our neighbors think. <laughs> Janine thinks this is silly, but I picked up some of those onion bags. <laughs> this one I thought was really cool, and these are old produce bags. Wow. I thought you, you actually have picked up produce bags before. I have, and I've sold them. I've got an orange ones, which are fun, but I thought this mm -hmm. one was really cool because that cheetah. That one is really cool. And these yeah. are fun just to hang up in your kitchen or Texas play with. onions. <laughs> How cool is that? And then this one I thought had really fun graphics. Onion time! <laughs> you know what time it is, Laura? It's onion time. Oh, that's so cute. I picked it up thinking of you. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Copyright 1964, made in Japan. Oh, wow. It might have some like stuff going on, but we can give him a good wash down. He's like a little giraffe. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I don't normally pick up the plastic kitschy centerpieces like this but this blue and teal colorway was like so cool to me yeah um it has are those limes little limes berries blueberries Fun. the colors are fantastic it's made in hong kong so definitely from the 70s and it gave me such like vintage 1970s christmas card vibes like i'll put in some mm, pictures but yeah, like yeah i see i see i was looking for another one to make a set of two but i didn't find it but um, I'll probably sell this and I hopefully somebody will uh, enjoy it because I just think it's so cool. You got some cookbooks? I did. I always take a look for good housekeeping cookbooks because mm -hmm. they tend to have great graphics and really fun graphics on the inside. Like look at those little like apple elves. Yeah, like 
on the pixies. bottom? Pixies. Pixies and you know, look at that little polar bear. So these are definitely really fun for the graphics inside. Mm -hmm. Also like just the recipes too. Yeah, for look sure. The, all these look cookies and stuff. Look at the ornaments. So fun. And Love then speaking it. of recipes, I picked up this one for your mom. I thought you'd like it. Ground, ground meat, meat cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> 204. Uh, to, to anyone watching, that's not an insult. No. <laughs> may have come across, thought this would be good for your mom. Ground meat cookbook. She likes to make but, cook yeah. with ground meat. Yes, so. she does. It has 204 intriguing ground meat recipes. So Intriguing. I'm intrigued. Yes. Already. Uh, also, it has some really cute graphics. Look at that. <laughs> Little mice. Ham mouse. Ham moose. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So we'll leave this uh, for Janine's mom. And then the last one I picked up was the holiday cookbook, of course. Ooh, gotta look at the holiday cookbook. And I mean, come oh, on. There's oh, also I a love um, those. St. Patrick's Day. Look at that. Oh, how fitting. We're actually, uh, tomorrow we're going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day at my mom's yeah, house. Yeah, there's me and you going to celebrate. Yeah, we're gonna look just like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is so fun for the graphics. How could I not? love it. This I didn't capture on video is hanging. It was strung up above the bar in the basement, which is also part of my mid-century dream home. I don't know if you knew that, Janine, but oh, to have a bar in the basement. Mm. Um, Good to know. And these actually work. <laughs> Thanks for letting me yeah, know. No problem. <laughs> these actually work and mm -hmm. the star reflectors on them, they look so pretty lit up. Oh, I, I was just going to imagine. They did. I tested them. Obviously they, they do work. I was just going to take yeah, these you just off. Said I know. <laughs> I was going to take off the stars if they didn't work, but mm -hmm. they did, so I took the whole thing. Are they plastic, the stars, mm -hmm. or? Yep. So they almost look like foil. I couldn't no, tell. They wow. are plastic. Um, oh, yeah, I see in the bottom here the plastic. These could be a little bit newer. These could be from the 70s. Um, the wire itself, though, is pretty old. So Definitely, yeah. Maybe even older than the 70s. This one's missing the star, but then I found it on the table, so the whole set wow. is complete, which is exciting. Wonderful. At the bar, I did find a bunch of napkins. I thought this little Christmas mouse napkin was so cute. <laughs> That's cute. I almost thought it was newer, but if you flip it over, there's no barcode. It's made in USA. Mm -hmm. So these are probably like from the 70s at the newest. And then these little Santas, there were a ton of. That is such a 70s Santa, if yep. I've ever seen one. Made in USA, brand Hallmark. new pack. Wow. Yeah, got the brand new pack and then a bunch of open ones which are a little wrinkled but I grabbed them anyway. Two fun sets of ribbon definitely just for the packaging like these totally. are so fun to put on a shelf. These That's are pretty so nice. collectible too. If you guys go to an estate sale you know you really got to look all over the house because Christmas can be hiding anywhere you know even if it's like just wrapping supplies you never know if you'll come across vintage holiday which is really collectible in all forms. Paper you know decorations lights so um, these will resell for a good good price considering how much I spent on everything. Oh wow. Yeah, I was really excited to find this. The box is in pretty decent condition. Mm -hmm. We just have to pop it out, right? Yeah, um, it is torn it's right here, here but, but it's like pretty... A lot of times you, you find them like um, very brittle or very like brittle. they've been like water, like they got water on them or Worn something and like stuff. in basements. And this has like the original like really thick Whoops, <laughs> tin foil. We will like. pick that little piece up, don't worry. <laughs> it has like the aluminum, like almost lead, like thick tinsel in it. Um, I wasn't sure if it was all in there. So then I grabbed this pack of almost like new old stock tinsel. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if this came in this original packaging. That's so cool. So I thought I could like construct, you know, with this tinsel, put it mm -hmm. in here and make a really nice box. Yeah, totally. Love the graphics. Those are some cute picks. A few fun picks. I'm sure there is Christmas and even Halloween at the sale, but I didn't find any of it. Um, I think I really had second pickings, which is crazy because I got there at 11 o'clock the first day. So it's a three day sale. So I'm thinking I grabbed some of the good stuff that was left over. Um, so I'm happy I did end up going today, but yeah, I got this and then some of the cards I want to show you guys. So this is the pile that I ended up bringing home with me. And I just wanted to show you guys some of the postcards i mean these are old there's wow. a bunch of ephemera and older cards and letters and stuff from like the 40s um a lot of it was like 1940 style cards 
like with that type of like mm -hmm. art deco style yeah. which is like collectible um it will resell if you're looking at christmas cards that are from the 40s like this is a great example of a 1940s christmas card it's not really cutesy it's more like elegant and art deco in its style but um these aren't as fast sellers as some of the as some of those really cute you know santa snowman elf ones but they're still really beautiful yeah they really are you know the colors on them are just beautiful mm -hmm. they will sell but not for as much but i did come across a few really cute ones adorable so this is an example whenever you have a santa or a snowman it's gonna sell for more than something without you know a classic santa on it and i just wanted to show too like the stamps used and the handwriting like it's just so cool to see 1949 here's one of the cuter ones of course right with the snowman it's adorable the graphics are just great look at that wow so cute pretty fun sale even though you know i didn't go at the crack of dawn but i still had a lot of fun it was fun too to show you janine and see yeah, your impression you of everything great stuff for thank you for only 15 dollars, especially with this little guy yeah. <laughs> um yeah lots of fun we hope you guys enjoyed this estate sale trip. We have lots more planned for the spring and summer. Let us know below if you want to see us hit up flea markets, more estate sales, garage sales. What do you want to see? I know we have some trash picking coming up. So thanks for joining us, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye. It's fun and fruity, <laughs> which also is my nickname. <laughs>